Trabalho da Ana Vila Alba, como artista e como curadora, interage com comunidades específicas abordando contingências sociais ou políticas. A prata artística de Alba baseia-se na noção de entrevidas e com experiência pessoal e posição geopolítica. A metodologia emprega nas suas narrativas, vidas espaciais e imersivas, bom som, fotografia e texto, procuram levantar um debate sobre o documentário da experiência, lembranças e emoções que traduzem a memória coletiva e o trabalho pela justiça social. A sua atividade como curadora abrange desde exposições, com trabalhos em vídeo, até iniciativas em espaços públicos e desenvolvimento de estratégia curatorial de arte financiada publicamente para artistas que trabalham com práticas participativas, uh, engajadas e críticas. Ana Viola Alberg é graduada pela Stockholm Film School e possui um bacharelato em curadoria e estudos de cinema pela Universidade de Estocolmo. Uh, bem como mestrado em estudos internacionais de museus pela Universidade de Gotemburgo. No tema da sua tese em arte contemporânea, ensina em exposições de museus fora do paradigma da instituição da arte, com sede em Estocolmo, na Suécia, Alberg é membro da KRO Swedish National, National Organization. Ana, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I'm really honored to be part of this conference. I've been asked to put forward some aspects of my work. Uh, the setting for the presentation is Swedish, but I've been working continuously in uh, kind of crossover in national uh, context. I will share cases from my practice, and by this provide an understanding what it is I do within social arts. My practice converges the role of the curator and the artist. I'm passionate about the museum, as a site and concerned about public sphere and the notions of privatization and populism. Perhaps ethics is a weapon as politics lost its ideologies. Is the museum a battlefield? No. It is the place where we recess and form new coalitions and strategies and of course share them. They are sites for inspiration and knowledge. This presentation elaborates on creative strategies and operational tactics I will move on from a project uh, I will start with a project that I made in Cleveland and move on to a social art project produced in St. Petersburg. I prefer to call my practice extended social art as I work on ways to reintroduce the work into the museum context. This will be followed by some curatorial formats. This work is from 2015, and it's an example of my process working with uncertainties. I was invited to Spaces program SWAP to work with the community. Cleveland having many possibilities and issues stretching from sustainable practices to shootouts in public space targeting Afro-Americans. Another option would have been to work on the thematics of death penalty. It is in practice in Ohio. These thematics had been worked on by several people, but no one really addressed the large Russian post-Soviet community. With my background working with State of Mind for 10 years, two years in production, and another eight years touring and lecturing about the work in the East and West, I felt that here I could expand on existing narratives by working with individuals displaced from the post-Soviet region and settled in Cleveland, most of them from Jewish communities. The topic of displacement was accentuated in the public discourse due to the situation in Syria. It linked as well to other works I've done on migration, push and pull factors for chosen exile in relation to ethical considerations. Imperial Differences was produced during an eight-week residency where an exhibition, exhibition was scheduled already five weeks into the state. However, the work was initiated already two years prior to the stay. During this time, I researched and scanned possible groups to work with upon my arrival. In this time frame, also the actual work shifted somewhat from a focus on Red Scare produced by the Hollywood apparatus, a new McCarthy era, 
to the experienced fear of the displaced and the place they left. Imperial differences elaborate some personal stories within a community. The participants had been in the US in between one month and more than 25 years. As I do not speak Russian, some of the members of the group did not speak English. The first thing I had to do was to find a community member who, could, who I could work closely with as my liaison. I ended up using footage from about half of the participants in order to obtain a focus of the narrative. I used a preset number of questions they all responded to. My knowledge of Russia and the post-Soviet issues in combination with previous community work was a door opener. I could ask rather simple questions from an informed position in order to get to the core experiences. My short stay and their schedule made it possible for me to only meet with them at one time for an hour and a half, including setting up my gear. To get invited to homes, the kitchens of these people, I could draw from the legacy of the working with state of mind, but also via the reputation of the institution and the negotiations of my Russian translator and assistant. The testimonies were interlaced with bridges of Cleveland, bridges as a metaphor, but also as a way for Clevelanders to come to terms with this also as relevant on a quite local level. Each session started with an interviewee peeling a potato. They got used to the camera and a chance to get rid of the stress for an interview. This is channel number two, um, <coughs> where the main narrative happens. Channel one is dedicated, this is what you see here, to set the ambience of the space. I made a prologue to shift from a rhythm of everyday urban life in Cleveland, as well as to retrieve a focus and a haptic connection. <coughs> this channel was set as a loop. We will get to see a little bit here momentarily. Um, and directly after that, move on to excerpts from channel two. The true reason for this being a two-channel work was that the institution could only provide two projectors and not even in sync. So the criteria of the aesthetics were determined by these conditions. The narratives elaborate on the issue of fear, of the unknown and oppressive powers. The two examples are followed directly by a Portuguese scholar and artist talking about the work and my approach in the spaces produced by um, Spaces, in the video producer of Spaces. Before moving on, can we kill that light, please? No, yeah. 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 The, the, the uh, spotlight on the uh, screen. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, never mind. Opposite. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> so, this was a loop that was as people walked in. And when they came in, there was a 20 minute um, film uh, of the interviewee. And it opened up with um, the experience of Adam Bong, which was kind of the highlight in between US and Russia or Soviet Union at the time. Uh, so I used that format. Because, well, you know, when you, 
how would I explain that? Imagine that you were born in jail. You know light, you know everything, you know uh, people around you, uh, you can talk, you, can, you know, you do that. But when they let you out of jail and you go to the world, everything is completely different from what you used to have. So it, it's an analogy, but it's pretty close analogy how, you know, how we, um, how we see our life here, and uh, you have to be—you have to be responsible for your own life. Uh, you make a decision. You make sure that that this this decision is good, and you do whatever it takes to um, for that to become true. You know, real life. So it's. It, it's different. I, I still, um, but, 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 but that's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to understand, and I'm trying to explain how I feel about it. But uh, for example, when we go on vacation to um, any other places on Earth, like you know Italy or uh, ski somewhere in the West and so forth. I, I still think about it like, wow, you know, look at, I mean, it was, that's what I always thought of and dreamed of, and now it's reality, and it's only up to me that what I can do and what I cannot do. What is most appealing to me in Anna Viola Salberg's work is the fact that she takes the role of an anthropologist. Somehow Anna becomes this ethnographer that is exploring and interacting with a specific community in Cleveland while at the same time uh, she's addressing larger social, political, geopolitical issues. She starts with uh, a very interesting historical premise, right? the kitchen debate from 1959, where Khrushchev and Nixon um, were discussing the benefits of communism and capitalism. Then in these kitchens, and as a viewer, I was invited to immerse myself, uh, to listen to all these stories, to all these testimonies. Um, and these stories uh, were related, of course, to this concept of this very rich notion of in-betweenness, uh, in-between geographies, in-between cultures, uh, in-between um, two sets of ideologies, and basically to use Anna's uh, terminology, in-between two empires. And also you learn about the um, challenges of coming to the United States, of immigrating to the West. And this was very interesting because you have, instead of having a planned life, a future that was predetermined, as it was under communism. You have now, um, you are facing a situation where you have to deal with personal responsibility, with uh, individual choice, and with uh, the question of freedom. When one woman says um, that she felt completely lost when she came here because she was facing this endless endless choice. And uh, at the same time, this other man states that coming to the United States was similar to being released from prison, as if he was now encountering this uh, new world of possibilities. I mean, in this piece, I used um, the forest as a border, as a border landscape. But for me, it's, it's, it's a metaphor, because it's a type of forest that one can both see as something friendly if you know your forest, it's not a, an unfriendly place. But if you don't know the forest, it can be uh, kind of threatening. And also the mist is kind of almost like a, for me, a, a veil if the forest is the society. So it's a place that it's, it's possible to navigate if you know it. And if you don't know it, 
and it pretty much lasts. It lingers on you. It's not a work that you can't see and then you go home with everything solved. It's something that sticks in your mind. It's, it's, I think it's a, a very introspective process that she's inviting us to be immersed on. My work with Russia began with State of Mind. It became an installation consisting of eight video channels and 11 group portraits of various queer micro-communities in St. Petersburg between 2006 and 2008. The reason for this long time was in order to establish trust with the communities, to grasp the complexity of the structure and secure the funding. I made this process and research-based project with Annika Carlson Rickson. It was important to obtain and maintain autonomy we were at the same time, of course, dependent upon funding, on contacts, etc. In the process of the work, we became temporary micro-institutions in order to produce and tour the work to major institutions in Sweden, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Austria, and the US. The full installation is part of uh, the collection at Gothenburg Art Museum. And additional prints were sold to public institutions in an early process to uh, finance the project. We work thoroughly on upholding integrity and responsibility towards the work and the people involved. The reason for this, um, I'm sorry, this is the reason why only limited material uh, about the project is available online. One of our main goals for this socially, social art project was not only to work to empower the queer communities, but also to tell the stories of present St. Petersburg and to elaborate on the situation in a five years' time. Here, as in imperial differences, the communities were not involved in the aesthetic decisions, but in a continuous dialogue on sensitive matters. We worked hard on the ethical aspects of representing someone else, not putting anyone in danger, nor exporting concepts of queers in the West. We had an ambition to construct the work in such manner that it was possible to tour it in art spaces in the Russian-speaking region and remain relevant in the art context in the West. It became an alliance of artists, activists, and academics. We collaborated closely with the institutions and the activists in taking care of any possible distortion that would happen during or after the exhibitions. During the tour, we also worked closely with local groups, inviting them to think tanks and discussions. It brought people together that normally did not meet. It could be women groups, queer activists, and photography clubs where most of the members were men, but all wanted to talk about different aspects of the work. By being in the same room, in a way forced the groups to lis listen to each other's aspects, to others than their own. The process of slow art making with large format camera and for the time high-end video camera had an eman emancipatory and empowering effect and actually claiming of the public space, using space as the setting for photographs and interviews. For a moment, a form of occupied territory of the queers. In addition to the video, sound and photography, metaphors of the city became part of the installation. At this time, the city was booming. Construction sites were everywhere and used blue tarps and pipe-based scaffolding. The color blue was used as backdrop for the photographs and metal pipes used to mount the video screens on. The monitors with talking heads formed an ever-changing group portrait towards the backdrop of the non-touristic view of the River Neva. Touring the work was quite expensive, but it was a signal of importance. It was a community worth listening to. We got good crowds and good press. The manner in which the artistic practice claims space holds time and with a firm interest focuses on issues of or in the community are important effects. 
the site-specific research and the, the uh, exploration in itself in any social art project has meaning or value, regardless, regardless if I work with migrants, genderqueer communities, or public servants. So the work on site with the groups can be considered social art, but then brought back into the art space as visual work. My approach facilitates a methodology of the non hierarchical The artist can step in from the side, so to speak. The works, in the works I have experienced the tendency of increased readiness brought on via the artistic mind and the general perception of the artist. It is allowed for the artist to talk about rather to talk, uh, it is allowed for the artist to ask rather basic and common questions. After all, it is an artist at work, and we all know they think a little bit differently. On the other side of this is what I believe could be called the artistic perceptive approach, and due, due to the deep focus on truths, but rather explorations of voices. I rarely posi position myself as an outsider, rather an insider with a differentiated experience. And this forms the basis of dialogue towards defining the specific questions and responses. Here the issues of trust is key and cannot be stressed enough for the success of the work. The topics I selected to work with do connect to my personal life. Moving on to curatorial approaches. In 2014, 10 art institutions in West Sweden got selected for a pilot project by... And the main question was, how can a museum be a host for a residency and what practice would develop? I got invited to curate the pilot at Fjörde Art Museum due to my knowledge of the post-Soviet art scene working with LGBTQ issues but also because I made City Art Lab a mural 2012. I will get back to this. One of the concerns was, does social art projects trans how does social art projects translate between cultures? As part of this process, we co-organized a symposium in St. Petersburg with the informal art school run by the collective Shodelat, in addition to inviting and working with the first resident artists. The following year, we decided not to follow the original question, but rather, how can an art museum be of benefit for social art and the artists in residence, and at the same time be part of institutional development? Since then, we have focused on Havana, Cape Town, Lisbon, and Yangon. We managed to secure funding on a three-year basis, something that makes a huge operational difference. Ares is today set up as a high-end residency at the small rural art museum for international artists working with extended social art, artists who have an interest of bringing back the work to the art institution. At the same time, it is a mapping process of five select cities with interesting social art scenes. In the mapping process, we met with curators, activists, embassies, galleries, and museums. And most important, in each place we made 8 to 12 studio visits with artists who had applied for the residency and we found to be extra interesting. Before leaving the city, we did the selection and had a second sit-down with the artist. The function of the mapping is to better understand the site where the, art, where the selected artist is practicing, to pave way for curatorial dialogue with the artist prior to the on-site residency in Fuerda. The project had formed an institutional development perspective, also empowered the staff at the museum by gaining knowledge about specific se segments that not even the institutions in the major cities would have. We have established a permanent studio and apartment, made connections to the local art scene, work with civil society, local artists, and university in Fuerda. We have also produced exhibitions with other artists we met during the studio talks. 
We have established nodes in different parts of the world as part of making the program sustainable. We will consult them and their networks in future calls. From 2019, AIRS will be run as an in-house program by staff curators. One can say that we have taken on to develop the museum. The museum-based residency as a social art project. In another field, one would say that we have developed and secured brand value locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. The director of the museum, Thomas Oldrell, is a former artist, and perhaps this is the reason why he was open to a process of uncertainty and dynamic exploration, instead of following residency manuals found in such places as Resartes. As part of the autonomy during the first five years, we had said no to funding from Swedish Arts Grants Committee. This, as we do not want to comply with their demands for a short list, with them having the final say of who would be the best heirs residency candidate. The heirs journey is scheduled to be addressed in a conference here in Lisbon in October next year, so I will wrap up this segment for now and move into other curatorial projects. In addition to working with museums and art institutions as an artist and freelance curator of exhibitions and residencies, I have worked outside the institutions. I have initiated projects with municipalities without the space for art or existing icon museums. <coughs> Examples of such are City Art Club and Mural 2012, both international projects. Large projects, large parts of this project have been invested in talking with local politicians, city clerks, writing grant proposals, building relations with civil society, with local businesses, and with local artists. City Art Lab took place in one town, establishing a temporary Kunsthalle, an exhibition about a complex graffiti pro project that took place in the previous year, bringing in international art students to a university course on the thematics shaping the city, uh, and workshop programs for local groups of non-artists, and then closing with an exhibition by local artists as I continue to Minsk to do a version at uh, Bull Gallery. Mural 2012 took place in four towns within a radius of 50 kilometers. This was the first time they ever collaborated. I identified the only public institution with, in between them to be the libraries. So they became the hubs in this project that produced more than 20 mural sites. Some were community murals, other, others by artists only. Four young uh, Mexican artists from Querétaro were brought in to work with the local artists. They later were contracted via the unemployment agency, a relation initi initiated during City Art Lab for staffing the Kunsthalle. These projects were not really possible, so big parts of the work was to create a curatorial concept that could tap into existing needs. For City Art Lab, it was the new direction from the national government to work with dialogues between local governments and citizens. The projects were successful, but was it really art? It was a frequent question. Art in the countryside is considered, is recognized for its beauty and is uh, performed by trained painters. Not even photography was really considered art by the locals, which is actually also the case with Swedish tax agency. They do not recognize photography, video, nor social art as art. So we have another VAT percentage. I continued to work for uh, another year with to establish a network of mural artists in West Sweden region. In this process, I also became the mentor for Board Record Collective in Mexico. I stay in contact, I stay in contact with groups I work with and continue a professional relationship and a personal friendship. I have worked on a commission project for cultural heritage without borders, producing a film and a pop-up pop -up exhibition. Uh, for a book tour on Syrian storytelling. 
is a cultural heritage project uh, with rather conservative stories, what is needed in the time of crisis? Is this an ethical stance? It is of great importance, is it of great importance to be one of the first to gather traditional oral histories as people are still in a state of trauma. I found it quite problematic, so I felt that I had to bring in voices in the video describing the migrant complexity in Palestine and Syria. 2018 has brought on two new big projects, both relating to where artistic production takes place. One project looking at production places, studios for artists, and the other exploring social art on the countryside. In many ways similar to City Art Lab, but with a greater emphasis on the conditions for artists. Region John Shipping Slam offered me to be the curate for Sideshow Edition 2. It started with one month spread out as a way during the spring to do preliminary research, a curatorial concept, and anchor it within the four municipalities. My concept explores investigations of specific thematics in each town under the umbrella of distancio, folding in a geographical distance as well as in between people. Just as in City Art Lab, bring forward the concept, write large application and maintain the dialogue with the town's select artists and get them approved by the towns and vice versa. I developed a form that can be adjusted if not granted the entire budget. This, as I feel that I, perhaps more so than the region, is in a position of responsibility towards the artists and the municipalities. To obtain deliverability in the uncertain process requires a fluid thinking and assessing values in different stages of the process. Not only from within, but also from stakeholders and those who can provide the funding. To elaborate on uncertainty as specifics of the time we live in and to roll out onto the rollout of the project, we have to claim that the true value of our time is within the capacity of being able to handle uncertainties of dif and differences by negotiation and mediation. My experience is that we need to operate in these gaps fill the policies with ethical and responsible considerations and present them back to the policymakers as possible ways to navigate the gaps. Governmental policies are not made for our sector specifically, but by presenting visions back to them, to the upholders of the policies, we have opened up new doors. It has opened up new, new doors for me. Grasping roar voices is an attempt to avoid consensus to populist expressions. To provide a bit of a backdrop to the last project I will elaborate upon, some statistics. The median income for artists according to the Swedish Association of the Arts is 1,300 euros per month. For the rest of the country, it's 2,400. The median cost for a subsidized studio uh, is 90, square me is 90 euro per square meter. The line for such a studio is more than 20 years. The rent level for a studio for others than are according to market prices. This, the subway map on the right shows the median rents at different stops. This is what is currently available. Unfortunately, it's a little bit out of focus, I think, and it's been through the presentation but it's far beyond uh, what any artist can actually pay. So, in addition to the artists, are re in addition, the artists are rarely approved to rent these spaces due to irregular, irregular income. The artists as the precariat. The new urgency I'm dedicated to is the possibilities for artists to not to comply to gallery market, but to continue to work on social issues and to have a site for production. Organism is a social art project with the artist as source community. 
with an attempt to contribute to solving the national crisis of art studios. I have here developed a model based on basically all you heard about here. It is innovative in its organizational, financial, city planning and architectonial aspects. I, have a, I address the problem from the side, not from the top down or bottom up. I have teamed up with an architect uh, that I've known for 30 years. I used my pos position of being well informed, but addressing the stakeholders from a position of not knowing how things are done and to find alternative strategies. Organism is sociocratic in its organizational model, ransomatic in its structure, and, and using uh, not yet occupied spaces for semi-permanent art studios. Also, the funding of the project implements a new approach. After seven years, the rent of the space had paid for the cost of the structure and the move to a new address. The benefit of this is that the peer group remains stable and that organism helps solving the studio dilemma. The real estate development department and the cultural department of the city of Stockholm finds this interesting and have approved a grant for the preliminary research. They themselves have a political mission to facilitate two to three hundred studios in Stockholm by 2020. They are not in the position of solving this new demand as long as... as I'm sorry. They are not in the position of solving this new demand as the long line uh, to get a studio coincides with the studio collectives being closed down due to rapid changes of the city. I do not know whether, whether I will be successful in getting the grant from the region. If this fails, I will turn to the innovative sector. A city cannot be without its artists, a city cannot be without its museum, but here, but we are in a time where we need to think through things differently. We need to approach things differently. As you might have noticed, most of my projects tap into public funding. What responsibilities do I have as a social artist back to the public? The methodology of my practice and the curatorial have many things in common. The primary one is my relation to an ethical decolonization of the public sphere and public space. I balance togetherness with autonomy. I combine existential questions with the right of the non-normality to be heard and be part of society and not to be infringed. As part of this process unfolding the dehumanization. I try to introduce vulnerability as a good state of being and that failing is not the end. It, is, it only requires the intellect to look for interesting things in the process that can be highlighted as a product of social art. I can never promise a specific result, but rather a process of exploring new strategies. I work to introduce delicate issues in museum settings as part of my extended reach of the projects to people that are not directly part of my specific source community or stakeholders. I take into consideration that I am a visitor at the specific sites, working on quite intimate and delicate topics, addressing how we, through social art and society, can encompass each other. At the same time, gain voice and dialogue, voices of the overseeing groups or issues that might also introduce discomfort. In some projects, voice can be understood as claiming space in the public discourse. Art is sometimes beautiful and nice, but in these days it also needs to stir up a dissensus and to face the shadows of representative democracy. Social art is not only embedded in the history of the arts, but also intertwined with society itself. This type of project also needs a closing remark, stating what has been achieved. This cannot be done by the artist, 
it is rather the voice of the institution. Within a museum context, art within a museum context is never autonomous. It is folded into the fabric of the institution and is therefore part of the narrative towards the audience and stakeholders. Social art by this methodology requires the ability to hold fear, tension, and the mechanism to readdress the project, to define different knowledges and values produced. So yes, I do have a tendency to work where it seems impossible. Not only, the only way of doing so is to be very determined and not to fear working with uncertainties. I use the informed position in combination with ethical aspects of the practice and I have a readiness for the consequences that an exhibition or, or an art program might evoke in certain groups. As artists and museums, we are constantly under attack. We have to justify our practice, defend our budgets, simply just juggle the impossible. If public space can be said to be in a diminishing state and at the same time face complexities where many live secular lives or in clinch with its, each other's political or religious beliefs, the void of the imminent and transcendental is present. There is a need to mediate this uncertainty. Social art brings on several things. In my case, it is to cultivate a discourse of differences and to produce knowledge that can be re-implemented in society. If a museum is more than a box showing off, showing off great wealth, power, history, or providing beauty, there is a need to educate our politicians, our grant givers, our audiences of the conditions of such practice. Together, we can, to, together, we need to work towards assessing new goals and new possibilities, dismissing colonial power structures and work towards that which constitutes togetherness beyond the national state of dominant discourse. We should not fear concepts of such dissensus and friction. My aim is to do so within a low tone of voice that lingers instead of confronts. We, as intellectuals and professional workforce of museums and social art, need to produce responsible, radical critique of the dominant public sphere to undo the ongoing dehumanization. In this process, it is essential that funding does not come with restrictions from grant-providing institutions, private or public, they should not have influence over our programming or artistic expressions. That is not only a sign of narrow-mindedness, it is an expression of populism, regardless if the restrictions or demands comes from the market or politics. Is it, it is censorship. Thank you. And I'm sorry for not speaking Portuguese. I speak so much better Swedish than English. But you know, you can do it. Thank you. So much for your great communication and a lot of aspects that are important to discuss in this, in this context. Uh, I don't know if there's any question for the others. No? It might linger. <laughs> well, that's I have question comes. I have, I have just a short question. Sure. Um, and it seems that the, the, one of the, of the concepts that you are consistently uh, evolving in your communication is uh, the concept of trust. 
Yeah. And to me, it, 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 it seems it seems very it seems very important to the concept very important to to discuss in, in, in the matter of the, the, the work that you are doing as an artist and also as a creator. Uh, uh, how 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 do you, do you um, of consider that this trust could be built uh, in so different contexts, so different uh, communities? And uh, also, how do you see that this trust uh, could be the, the, the strongest support for your for activity, um, even if as you say, uh, sometimes the political power, the, 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 the political interests uh, are uh, uh, a different opinion about that. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a person that I really like to help each other. Therefore, I'm approaching any other individual the same way. By nature, we want to help. That is, if we feel some sort of connection so, I don't know, I try to build my trust around first being a person, relating to the other person, and then it doesn't really matter if that person is of any of those categories in the politician. Um, and I think that sometimes you do find people that you know from the very beginning, this door is closed. But that person is most likely not the one highest up in the food chain. So I try to, when I work with, with um, curatorial aspects, I try to address people as high up as possible and not the people in between. Those people in between, I believe, are most often the ones who try to stop things in order to, look, to make their budgets look good or whatever agendas they might have. So um, it is a slow process of, of trust building and I think it's possible to implement it also within the museum and talking to the politician, or at least that has been my experience. But then also, it's this, um, the gaps or the uncertainties. That is also a point where I think we have to be better, and I'm saying we, but I think we have to be better of uh, transmitting our needs. I think we also need to be better not to look for, um, not to read through policies as if they don't fit us, but try to read them, try to see how they fit us, and then the explanation back, that's where the key is, and that's where you can create dynamics. So I read a lot about the people I'm about to have a meeting with, and try to see what their professional interests are, and then try to go around my own interests for a little bit to tap into their needs, and then that facilitates what I really want. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's very much to talk about.